Hello and welcome to the final video in our UI kit course. Now, as you can see from this side here, you can see a whiteboard on the floor and you can see a drill over there ready to put some shelves in. I have indeed moved house. We are not in the same Curious Byte office that we were before. Um, so when I started this video course, I was in one house and at the end of it, we are now in a completely different house. That's how long it's taken. But fear not, we will finish this video. So in this video, we're gonna learn how to publish our UIKit library onto NPM, then to be installed on other people's apps later on. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the first few things that we need to understand is that to export this, as a component library or as a UI kit, uh, we just need to amend these files here. So that is the git ignore, the babelrc, the package.json, the index.tsx uh, file for the entire project, uh, our TypeScript config, and our Webpack config as well. Now, with these changes, um, we'll be able to export the UI kit as a module. Now, the first thing we need to do in the git ignore is basically just make sure that we ignore the build folder, which is the disk folder, which is there. You can see that that's grayed out now. So that means it's being ignored. Um, and that's when we build our project, that's where it's gonna be. We don't want it committed to git, so we definitely want this ignored. Um, in the Babel RC folder, all we need to do is add a few plugins. Um, and this is essentially, it's gonna be how we handle our JavaScript. And we want to be able to tell Babel that this is what I want compiled down. Um, so to do that, all we simply do is add these plugins here. So we want to be able to add the spread operator for objects. Um, what that means is whenever we want to use the spread operator, whether it's for props, uh, whether it's for objects in general, um, or whether it's for destructuring, we can do that. So that's a really handy thing to have and to be able to compile for us. Um, the other thing is obviously CSS modules. We want that to be able to compile with Babel into common JavaScript. And when I say common JavaScript, it's just JavaScript that's used by browsers um, at the default level. And then we obviously want to transform our TypeScript. So um, we need to make sure that these three are installed. So to do that, just need to open our terminal and go to our UI kit and run these commands. And that will install Babel plugin transform object rest spread operator and Babel plugin react CSS modules and Babel plugin transform TypeScript. So make sure those are installed. Brilliant. So these three are now installed. Let's move on to our package.json. So with our package.json, <laughs> as you can see, um, it's yeah, it's a bit, it's in a bit of a state. Uh, the names are all over the place. The versions uh, are not quite right. Uh, we've got some scripts that we don't need, so let's just start tidying that up. Uh, the first thing we want to do is just make sure that this is named correctly. So let's uh, set that to let's just set that to UI Kit Library for now. We'll keep that at version one. Um, we'll just put curious byte UI Kit for the description. Uh, we've got a GraphQL command here, uh, which we don't need. So we can get rid of this server command because we're not using GraphQL uh, in this project right now. Uh, we've got the start command, which is fine, but we're not really using React. So it's a bit odd. So we just really need these two as the main ones. Uh, we've got our create React app scripts here. Uh, we don't need these two because uh, we've not set up our testing yet. Uh, we don't need these two since we've not set up our testing, so we can get rid of those. Um, and our build command. So this is where um, a lot of the a lot of the work is going to be. So what we're going to do is we're simply just above that we're going to add three new commands. So we're going to add three new commands. Uh, the first one is clean, and what that is going to do is that is going to delete the distribution folder for us. So that's just going to clean that up. Uh, so that disk folder there. So if we were to run npm run clean right now, that'll just rim wrap the disk folder and get rid of it, which is great. And that'll just go straight down and remove all the files within the folders, uh, which is what rim wrap is. 
um, and then compile post. So this is post compile, whoops, uh, post compile. Uh, we want this to uh, prepare our dist folder ready for compiling and sending to, um, so we want to be able to prepare our dist folder. So we want to be able to uh, prepare our dist folder ready for publishing to NPM, which I found to be a very useful um, plugin to have. Uh, to install it, simply go npm install uh, npm prepare dist, which we'll do now. So let's get our terminal out. The reason I don't often use this terminal here uh, to install modules is because on a Windows computer, uh, this tends to have permission issues on WSL. So if you're on a Mac, feel absolutely free to use uh, VS Code's terminal. It should have all the same permissions as a normal terminal and you won't fall into any real issues installing anything or moving folders around or anything that requires a bit of permission. So let's install uh, prepare dist again and save to dev. Let's make this a bit bigger as well. So let's uh, install npm prepare dist and save it to dev as well. Brilliant, all done. So once we've got the post command done, and then we just simply delete this because we're not using create react app, we're using webpack to build everything together. So let's run npm run clean. And we are going to use webpack to build all of this together. It's going to use our Babel settings. It's going to use our TypeScript settings and our webpack settings to basically get this ready to be published by to get this ready to be published for NPM as a module. Now I'm not using the production command here, which completely minifies and makes the build file a lot smaller. The reason being is because I want to be able to show you the code afterwards once we get it into our dummy uh, React app afterwards. So I will take this out for now because I don't want it completely minified. And then we just run the compile post command. So this is our build command. Um, and we can run that using npm run uh, build, and that should do that for us. Uh, we won't do that just now. npm run build. Now we won't do that just now because we've still got a bit more uh, to do just yet. So we'll go further down. Um, yeah, and, and feel free to edit the keywords, change any of this, um, any of your other commands that you want to change if you want to change the author name. Go ahead. Now here, what you'll notice is that we've got the dependency folder here, which is the normal dependencies and the dev dependencies. Now the difference between the two is the dev dependencies won't actually be uh, compiled and the dev dependencies won't actually be bundled with the production code. Whereas these modules here will actually be bundled with the production code, which is what we don't want. Because you, if you look through here, there's a lot of things we don't need. Like again, GraphQL is in here um, and just things we don't need. So the best thing to do is grab React and React on, which is the only two that we need. Get them right to the top, pop them at the top of the object, the dependencies object, grab all of these, delete that go back and at the very top here, paste them in. And there we go. So this is now the new list of dev dependencies. And all we're going to have is React and React DOM coming with you, uh, with your uh, module. And it's going to be a lot smaller, a lot more compact, um, which is what you want. And that is our package.json file, I believe. Um, uh, just going back to the top, we are missing a few things at the very top, I've just realized. When this project can pass down ready for a module and it gets installed by somebody, we want it to be able to tell or know which file that it's going for. And to do that, we need to say this is the module file and this is the main file. And it's going to be in the disk folder and it's going to be the index.js, which is essentially this index.tsx file being built into um, uh, this index.js file because it's getting converted. Now it's saying here that it's a duplicate object key. That's because at the very bottom here, we do have uh, the main file set to the TypeScript file, which is, you know, it's, it's useless once it gets compiled because 
uh, it won't be, there won't be a TypeScript file there. So we can delete that for now because it's only going to be a JavaScript file. Cool, that's all ready. Uh, let's move on to our index.tsx. Now, as you can see here, this is just a normal React page. We don't need this to be sent across because when they're exporting our components, they're not going to care that we've got an index.tsx file for our project uh, that says hello world. So we can actually just go ahead and delete all of that. And then instead, what you want to do is you want to get all your components that you've made and then import them. So we've got our code block uh, and we're importing that from our code block file here. Um, and you can see that I'm using the double name import. So I'm using the button folder and then the button component file as well. And that's just because of the way uh, default imports work with Webpack. It's just far easier to do this. Um, you can obviously tweak your Webpack config to be able to use default imports, but I, it's something I wouldn't worry about at this stage uh, of your UI kit. I would simply just focus on doing the double imports, even though it looks a bit ugly. And then we go down here. So we just export all of these in one object. So we want the button, the code block, the card icon. Obviously, the more components you have or the fewer you have, you can amend this as you go along. And that is our index file, which will be our index.js exporting all of these in your module, which is great. Now let's go to our TypeScript settings. So we need to tell TypeScript that we actually have a build folder in mind, and that will be our disk folder. Uh, we also want to send our ESL uh, module interop uh, to true because that will help us uh, compile at runtime. We want to be able to set this to true uh, so we can have default imports working uh, on our project in TypeScript. Uh, and then we go here and we'll change this to common JS uh, just so we know that what the module has been exported as because we want people to be able to uh, use this widely if they need to. Uh, down here, we're going to add, we're just going to amend what we're including, what we're excluding. So we just want to make sure we're excluding the disk folder and the node modules from being compiled. And we are including our source folder. Um, and I did have to uh, break it down like this, just so it knows to go in every folder and grab it. Now for the last and major part, let's go to the Webpack config. Luckily, not going to need a great deal of change. We can delete that Webpack um, variable because we're not using it. What we are going to need is uh, an ugly JS plugin uh, variable. And that essentially is going to help us minify the project even better. So ugly, ugly JS uh, as a Webpack plugin is great for minifying your JavaScript in Webpack. It's highly used uh, and it's something I'd recommend you to use when you're minifying your JavaScript uh, with Webpack as well. So again, like um, the other parts of the site, we need to make sure that we install this into our project. So if we open up our terminal again, and then we install that, just make sure we get that to save dev. Brilliant. So we've got that installed. Um, and then we're simply going to add that here in its own optimization uh, key. And that will just be including uh, ugly.js plugin as a minimizer. Uh, we just need to update our extensions to include SAS. So we, these are our, kind of our main files uh, that we're uh, working with, the, the TypeScript files, JS, uh, JSON, SAS. We actually don't need uh, index.bundle.js anymore because we're using index.js as the bundle file name. Um, we're using CommonJS too, so it's kind of like an improved version of CommonJS. You actually get a few more features, um, which is pretty cool. So you get a few more up-to-date JavaScript features. Um, we'll set that to UIKit library, and we'll have the uh, UMD module uh, name definition set to true. And just below that, we're just going to make sure that we're handling our React and React DOM compilation properly. Uh, we'll just put that back there. Brilliant. Um, and just down here, we need to make sure that we add our TypeScript files. Um, we don't really need this because we've not written any JSX files, but I mean, you can keep it just in case somebody wants to write in JSX instead. Gives them the option. Uh, and then if we go to our TypeScript loader and we just make sure we add that as well, our declarations. And we just make sure we add declaration faults to our awesome TypeScript loader, which should help us uh, export our TypeScript. Brilliant. I think that's it now. I think that is everything. So what we can do 
is we can just make sure that this all works by running the build command. So let's run npm run build and see what happens. And we've got an error. Let's see what it says. Unexpected token. So file, uh, not file, line 92, line 92. Ah, okay. It's not liking something. So we've got that, that's fine. That's fine. Ah, I think we're one short. Right, that should be better now. Yep, and that's working. Always make sure to close your brackets. NPM run build. There we go. And now it's built. So let's go take a look. So if you go to our disk folder, we can see that, let's just bring this out a bit. So we can see that these are our fonts that they're being exported. Uh, our SVGs are exported. Uh, we have our index. Um, again, you can go and amend this uh, in the code. Uh, if you just go and change that to whatever you want. So this is in the public folder if you want to change it. So UI kit, uh, curious bytes, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you notice the package JSON has been moved over as well, which is super important. Um, and that's got all our details that we had uh, and it's just exporting, uh, where is it? Oh, I've lost it, there we go. It's just exporting React and you can see there's no other modules in there at all. More importantly, if we go to the index.js, this is our UI kit now. <laughs> so let me bring this down a bit. This is our UI kit. Now it looks a bit crazy, but if we search for our code, so for example, if we look for code block, you can see that our code block component is here. And you can just go and have a look through the code, the props, and yeah, you can just explore everything. Obviously, if you set this to production mode, the webpack to production mode, uh, you won't see this as easily. But there you go. Now that we've we've done that, let's go and publish this to NPM. Now the way we do that is you just make sure that you have logged in. So if you type in NPM login, and then it gives you this prompt. So you put in your details. And then we're logged in. And then what we want to do is we want to publish our dist folder. So UI kit library, and you can see now that has been put up. So let's go find that right now. So that will actually be an NPM. So if we go to npmjs.com and we type in UI kit library, and there you go, you can see version 1.0 curious by UI kit. And it's got the readme from the folder that I set. Uh, it's saying it's 933 kilobytes, which is pretty big, but we've not really minimized it too much. Uh, we could go way further and make it smaller if we wanted to. But yeah, look at that. There you go. <laughs> that is our UI kit. Now let's actually use this in an actual project. Let's go and put this into a blank uh, React app project. So if I open up the terminal again and I clear this and I go back one folder, so I'm in my sites folder, and what I'm going to do is I am going to set up a new React project using Create React App. Now, if you haven't heard of uh, Create React App, it's a command line tool for just basically really quickly scaffolding up a new React project. And they use something called NPX, which is what we're going to be using. So I'll show you how to get a, a Create React App project up. Now I'm not going to assume that everyone here has heard of Create React App. If you haven't, uh, certainly go check it out. Uh, just type it into Google. Uh, you'll probably come across it. Uh, make sure to install it globally. Uh, so just something like uh, Create React App, something like that. And that will install uh, Create React App globally for you. Um, but let's, so let's create a new uh, React App project. So we'll click npx create react app and we'll call it mock UI. And what this does is this is going to create a react app and put it in a mock UI folder, as you can see there. So now it's in that folder. We'll just wait for it to install. You can add uh, different templates to create react app. So you could add a TypeScript template. Um, you could add some SAS to it if you want. 
There's all kinds of recipes out there and it's a really good CLI tool. I'd highly recommend checking out. Brilliant. So let's go into our folder. So we go to mock UI. Um, and the first thing we want to do is, is npm install. Now, uh, create React app uses uh, Yarn, which I'll show you now. Um, let's open up the folder and go to mock UI. Open that up. So if we go and have a look here, you can see there's a yarn.log file um, because these projects use yarn. Now you can use uh, yarn if you want and you can just click yarn and it will install this all for you. Um, I prefer npm, so I've installed npm. Um, so I'm going to delete that from the project, not that it matters too much. Let's go back to the terminal, just see how we're getting on. Another reason uh, I wanted to make sure that we're using npm is that the whole flow of it is similar to what you used to before. So if we've used <laughs> npm for the other videos, then we might as well carry on using npm for this final video as well, even on this app. Brilliant, so that is all installed. So let's go take a look at the project. So we can see that we have our app.js here and we've got our uh, basic files. There's quite a lot of scaffolding here. Got our package.json. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, get started and just start adding uh, our UI kit. Uh, let's go to our UI kit here. So this is the one we've just created. Uh, we'll go here and click this and this should copy npm install UI kit library for us. And then let's go here, clear that and install our UI kit. Exciting times. Da -da -da -da. That is installed. Let's just run that uh, to see if this all works fine. So we'll npm run start or npm start. And there we go. Let's go take a look. Let's wait for it to load. And there we go. The spinning React atom of success. We've now got our React app set up. Uh, so let's just go add one of our components and just see how it looks afterwards. So if we go to our package.json, there we go. We can see our UI kit is now installed alongside some other things. Um, let's go to app.js. I think we'll go to about here. No, let's not go here. We'll go here and then we'll just add our button component. Um, and then we'll just make sure that we're importing that. So we're going to do structure our import. So we're going to say we want button from UI kit. And you can see that it now turns up in an auto suggestion from VS Code because it knows that it's installed. If we click that, it now points us towards our node modules because it knows exactly where it is. And if we click this, it then takes us to it. Isn't that fun? Right, so let's add some props. Uh, let's add text. Um, uh, we'll say, wow, I have my own UI kit. And then we'll also say, uh, we'll give it a color. And we'll use the American spelling for color. And we'll say primary, not in caps, because that'd be weird. And we'll say primary. Let's go take a look. So it seems to have put the button all the way down here. Uh, let's just move this up actually, just so it doesn't look as weird. And boom, there we go. There is our button with all the styling, with all the code that we did. So we can see that our class names are all set up. It's already using um, local CSS names. Uh, it's got our area index. So it's got all our accessibility stuff that we set up. It's got our tab index. We're all good to go. Uh, we've even got our colors. Yeah, our very mature colors here. Uh, yeah, so brilliant. So there we go. And that's how you set up a UI kit, you publish it to an NPM, and then you install it on another project. I hope that was useful for you. I've been doing this, uh, this video course, I think for a few months now, and I started in one house and now I'm in a completely different other house. So yeah, it's been, a, it's been a ride for me as well. I would highly recommend just going and having a go, playing around, making your own component libraries, maybe trying one in a certain style and then trying one in another style or trying to make a super accessible UI kit that you, know, you can pour all your knowledge about accessibility into and then just export it and see what people think. 
There's also a really good uh, website out there, which is kind of in the same vein as this, um, which is called uh, Bit. So bit.dev is where you can basically export your components. Other people can access them and have a look at them. Um, you can do that for individual components, but it's something worth checking out. So this is how to create a reusable UI kit library that you can put on an NPM and anybody can install. If you enjoyed the course and if you enjoyed the video, please do make sure to subscribe and like. It really does help us out here on Curious Byte. And as always, stay curious.